Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's Down and Dirty is a request by Dennis. He asked, how do you level yourself up in an excavator that doesn't necessarily have a blade? So, first of all, I do want to apologize for the audio quality. Uh, I brought my new microphone out here today and totally forgot the adapter. So we are just going off of raw GoPro today. I apologize. That being said, we are in a CAT 308 today, so technically if I spin around, I do have a blade. We're gonna pretend that I don't for the sake of this video. Um, and I do have the camera pointed down a little more because I wanna show you what's happening up close to the machine uh, as opposed to getting way out there. This is, this is not a video about digging so much as it is leveling a pad for yourself. So let's go into a couple different scenarios. The first one is exactly what we're in right now. So we're sitting at an angle. I don't know if you can really see that since you can't see the horizon, but our machine is actually pitched this way a pretty decent amount. And I've got plenty of room here to work so I can track back and forth to make my pad. So what I would do in this situation is I would actually take material from my high side over here on the right and I would move it over to the left side to kind of even an amount. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna reach out here, scrape some of this sod off. The machine's cold, by the way, and I haven't run a 308 in a while, so I'm gonna dig like a rookie for a minute. Just bear with me. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that material and we're just gonna lay it out here. And we'll do another scoop. that out there and so now what we've got yes the left side here that my bucket is hanging over is a little higher but it's also totally uncompacted so I'm actually gonna scrape this down just a little to make it a little more even and then knowing that it's gonna compact we're gonna track up on it and by the way my track on this side here is gonna go down in the slot we just made So I've actually overcompensated a little bit and you're not gonna be able to see, but we are now pitched this way a little bit, not nearly to the degree that we were, but we have now overcompensated and we're pitching back the other direction. So what we can do is really easily, we can track back. And you can see now how much that soil has compacted and it is still a little high. So we're just gonna take our bucket here and we're gonna nose a little of that forward. And then we're going to track back over it. And now we're sitting much more level than we were. So that's one way you can level yourself out. Uh, I would recommend anytime possible, make yourself level along the entire track base just because it's going to make you a lot more stable for digging. Now let's approach a situation where we can't necessarily level ourselves an entirely flat pad. Um, another thing we can do is we can make it to where we're all of all four corners of our tracks are supported. In other words, as long as all four corners of the tracks have something to support them, then the machine will sit level and it's not going to rock on you. So for instance, let's take some of this material. We're going to throw a little pile there and then I'm actually going to make a little pile. Let me scoop forward a little bit. I'm going to make a little pile a little further up there that's about the length of my track base. And because we're so low over here, I actually need to bring this side up just a hair. So we're gonna grab a little, little of this material and put that right there. And so now I have four corners. My right front corner is gonna sit on this pile. My left front corner is gonna sit on this pile. My left rear corner is going to sit on this little pile here by our track, and my right rear corner is going to sit on the ground that's actually virgin soil. So we're going to track forward, and so now if we were to get out of the machine, you would actually see that my tracks are suspended in the air except for the four corners where we've got pads created for ourselves. And you can see it's not as stable as it was 
when we had the whole track base supported, but I'm level, and this is a nice nice pad for me to load off of. In fact, uh, this, let's see here, let me see which corner it is. So this corner that I'm sitting over right now needs to come up just a hair, and we can make a really easy adjustment. All we're gonna do is track back just a hair so that our bucket can reach, and we're gonna grab a little of this material and just do a little flick. And now when we track forward, we've built that corner up enough, right there, look at how firm and stable that is now. We're not getting nearly the rocking that we were. And now, even though only the four corners of my machine are supported, I can very comfortably load a truck. So that's another way you can level yourself out. Okay, now let's take the scenario of we're up on a tight pile, we don't have the ability to track forward and backwards a lot, so we've got to kind of work in a very small footprint. So the first thing that I would do is, I, I'm going to pretend in this scenario that I can track at least kind of half my track base. So we're going to be able to go just to this little pile, let me make sure you can see on my screen what I'm pointing at here. We're going to track to this little pile right here in front of us, that's as far forward as we can go. So we've got to make this work. So if we're going to level ourselves out, the first thing I'm going to do is, we've got limited room, I'm going to take a little of this material here, and you got to, when you're working this close to the machine, you got to kind of flick it to get it close to you. So you can see how I'm just quick flick, and it's going to toss that material up to the tracks. So that's going to get this corner relatively close. So we're going to track just a hair, we're gonna go just a hair further, right about there. So we're actually, we're actually sitting further forward this way than we wanna be when we load. But now that's going to allow us to work the rear of our tracks. And the same thing, all I'm gonna do, I need to take this corner here and scrape it down. And I want that material to go on this track over here. And you'll have to forgive me because I'm not used to running this 308 and so I'm not used to where the stick cuts out and I'm, I'm uh, still getting used to how I can flick material. But you can see that I'm flicking material, I'm getting close up against my track. This is a lot easier in a bigger machine where you can get that bucket pretty close to your track because you can actually flick it and the goal here is to actually flick it right up against the track since we are working in such a limited space. So I'm going to try to use a little oomph here. There we go. And you can see, maybe you can see, hopefully you can see, that that got pretty dang close to being right at my track here. And so now what we can do is we can cap forward, and again, we've got four corners supported now. I'm still tipping this way a little bit, so let's make another adjustment. We're gonna track this way just a hair more. We're gonna go back to this corner here, and it needs to raise up, so I'm gonna grab this material, I'm gonna give it a good flick. Well, with cold hydraulics, it's not gonna flick for me like I wanted to. I really should've warmed this machine up before I started making this video. There's a workaround. Look at there. So if you curl your bucket, you can actually get it a little closer. But we've got all that material built up right up against our track, so we're gonna track back. And now it's starting to level us back out again. So that's just a couple of the ways that you can level yourself out a pad when you don't have a blade. Yes, I realize this machine has a blade, but we didn't use it to do any of these leveling scenarios. So there's a couple different ways you can do it. Um, like we did out here, you can take material from the high side, use it to build up your low side. If I just wanted to, let's redo our scenario out here. If I didn't want to use any material on the low side, we'll just, pretend that doesn't exist there and I just needed to get this side here down then that's really simple we just need to cut this a little deeper we're gonna cut it down to about here and now I've got a nice level track base when I get down in that slot my track base is gonna be nice and level between those two sides or likewise if we don't want to take off of the high side, pretend that this is all filled in, we can take extra material from around the job and we can just scoot it over and we can actually build our pad as we go doing this. So let's back up a hair. And so we're just gonna build us a pad as we track out here. 
we're gonna take that material and just shove it over. And again, this is if you don't want to take material from the high side, you wanna build the low side up. We're just gonna build that out, and now as we track over it, it's gonna bring us back to level. And we can check real quick, do we have any rocking? Yeah, we got a little rocking on this corner right here. And so all I need to do, track back a little bit, again, supporting that corner, Cold hydraulics is not going to participate for me, but we're just going to build that up a hair. And now look at that, we're nice and stable. I'm not getting any rocking when I move my boom. We're all nice and stable. We've created a nice level pad that we can load a truck off of. So the moral of the story, the, the gist of this entire video is you've got a giant shovel right out there in front of you. That doesn't just have to be used to load trucks. You can use that arm to do all sorts of things to make a space for you to operate in. In my excavator tips and tricks videos, one of the things I talk about is using your bucket to actually smear the pile away from your counterweight so that you aren't rubbing your counterweight on the pile. I mean, this excavator arm is a tool not only for the work you're doing, it's also a tool for you to set up your workspace. So I hope this has been helpful. If you guys have any questions about any of this, as always, drop a comment down below. I'm more than happy to answer questions. And that being said, we'll catch you guys on the next video. Have a good one, guys.